Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video where today we return with round 18 of our F1 manager McLaren career mode. Yes, this weekend we're back at the Suzuka International Circuit, of course. Five races to go of the campaign, including this one here today. If you missed out on the last video uh, that went live from Singapore a few days ago, would recommend going back and checking it out. And as well, of course, if you missed out on the Haas Road to Glory, it was a massive episode uh, that went live yesterday. Would definitely recommend going back and checking that one out as well, of course. Uh, two races to go with that series. Yesterday we went to Brazil, of course, and what could have been the championship decider. But I won't leave any spoilers at the start of this video, of course. We've got a lot of big things going on, though, still in our F1 manager series. At the moment, I'm not really focused on doing any more upgrades to the current car. In fact, actually, when we head over uh, to car developments, we are only researching... Uh, ready for next season there and you can see so there's already research being done on the front wing and the rear wing uh, and none of the other parts are meant to be changing on the car as well so just some aerodynamic tweaks as we head into season two of this career mode but i suppose we may as well therefore try and get some stuff done of course uh we actually there's no point researching is it we may as well try and design uh some new parts for our current car of course uh, but we've got we've got no time left, so that was all for nothing as well. But of course, if you're new around here and you aren't already, please do make sure you get yourself subscribed to the channel. Of course, we're getting incredibly, incredibly close now to a hundred thousand subscribers, less than a thousand to go. So certainly want to make sure you get yourself subscribed for daily Formula One related content. Then, but having to build an all new chassis are ready for the car this weekend here in Suzuka. I think we just got to get on with it though, and hopefully we got four days to the Japanese Grand Prix so those that first suspension yes yeah, should be complete in time let's jump into it though let's join it in free practice Konnichiwa from the Suzuka circuit in Japan this unique track is a favorite home for motorsports and it welcomes us back this weekend get ready for exhilaration and speed with the Japanese Grand Prix Drivers will battle it out this weekend on the snaking turns of Suzuka, the only figure of eight track in Formula One. High-speed downforce will be the name of the game here, if teams want to secure a place on that podium. This is it. We're down to the last few races of the season, and it's time for that final push. Who will be crowned champion at the end of it all? We'll find out soon enough. So, without further ado, let's get started. Right, here we are then, Suzuka, and it looks like we could be in for a lot of rain this weekend, just like uh, the real-life Japanese Grand Prix last year. Friday's running is meant to be clean, though, uh, or clean and dry, so we'll see as to how things go here. But, of course, as always, just got to try and work out, uh, get the setup where I like it, and then hopefully, of course, we can get in and make some good progress early on in the weekend. Right, well, there we go. Both cars out onto the circuit early on in the session here. Actually, a lot of cars trying to get out onto the track real nice and early here in free practice. Looks like, yeah, like I said, we aren't going to see any rain in practice, but it is certainly going to arrive ready for qualifying tomorrow and the race on Sunday. So it might be that we have to run slightly more downforce uh, than both drivers are happy with or confident with in these conditions, but I'm pretty certain last season uh, in the Ferrari series, I actually had a wet Grand Prix as well here from Suzuka. So we, we have experienced this before. I think that one actually didn't go too badly if I remember correctly. Um, I think, I can't remember which driver it was, but I know one of them, I think, won the race and then the other one had a bit of a disaster, but we'll see what happens this weekend, of course. We're still building up that small uh, championship lead over Alpine as well in the constructors, but I just want to see Oscar Piastri uh, continue to make good progress there, and I also want to see Lando Norris not bottle it this weekend. That would be quite nice. Well, I did tell both drivers to uh, not fight each other and stay in clear air. Uh, no, I haven't. I've done the wrong thing, haven't I? Oh, I'm so stupid. I'm so stupid there. I clicked on the wrong buttons. So now we might watch uh, Lando back away from Oscar in front of him. But only what, one one hundredth of a second between them. Safe to say they're pretty even so far in FP1. No, someone's binned it early on here in free practice. Lando Norris have just set him to come back to the pit lane as he seems quite happy with the car. I can't see anyone stopped on track. Yuki Sonoda, of course, home weekend for him down at turn 11 as he locked up and just ran deep. 
Hopefully he hasn't done a Danny Kavir. Yes, he has. And Mick Schumacher's just joined him. I've never seen a crash like that on F1 Manager, uh, where one just follows the other in, into the wall, I guess. No, it wasn't Mick. I think it was Kevin Magnussen, wasn't it? Yeah, so both of those cars now at half a front wing. Lando Norris heading back to the pit lane, uh, and hopefully Oscar Piastri will give us some feedback as well. And there we go. Oscar Piastri is not so happy uh, with the car, so we'll bring him back in. We'll make some tweaks. Mick Schumacher again has Let's apparently binned it. No, that was Kevin Magnussen, wasn't it? Now Mick Schumacher has binned it, apparently, at turn 11. Have we watched Max Verstappen follow him in? Uh, nope, the Dutchman there knows how to avoid that wall. It's a shame neither Haas car does. Um, but yeah, both of our cars heading back out onto the circuit. Then you can see Lando Norris still literally uh, in the pit lane there. But Oscar Piastri re-emerges back onto the iconic ribbon of asphalt. Uh, that is this Suzuka circuit. I'm intrigued to see whether we... This is just generally now just me having a conversation whilst we run through free practice as to whether we could see Suzuka make some changes in the not-too-distant future. But, to be honest, I don't really know where they could. The only thing I wonder is either they get rid of the Casio Triangle and just make that a really, really fast section of circuit right the way from Spoon back down towards Sir Mug, because then you'd certainly see some overtaking. But, of course, the Casio Triangle does offer a good place to make overtakes as well. I think the big one still is, do they finally allow DRS through 130R? That, I feel, will make a big, big difference to the spectacle we get around here. Because, of course, Sector 1, pretty much until you get Spoon, is the only place on the venue you can overtake. Um, but, yeah, could we, could we see some tweaks to Suzuka? In the future of Formula 1? I, I don't know. No oh, Norris, boy. careful. Easy does it, mate. Don't really want you out there. Thank you. We can avoid it. I'm guessing that's what Here's Alonso's done as now well. Just, just quickly have a look. Then you can see just gets very, very lucky there that he was actually able to keep it away from the wall. But Oscar, Piastri, you know, sometimes you've got to push the limit to find the limit. But, you know, just, just keep it calm, my friend. And, of course, as soon as I say that, Oscar Piastri goes and spins it. Love to see that. I mean, just... You're on the curb. Just drive spin. away, surely? Just see, oh, there we go. It does get going again. Um, but Oscar Piastri, this does not fill me with confidence early on in the session. Well, despite all that, Oscar Piastri apparently is happy with the car. So that's interesting, but I'm not going to knock it too much. 15 minutes left of free practice. So I've clicked the wrong button. He's got 170 metres until he comes in, which he has done still. Uh, how are we looking then? So we just need a tiny bit more... A downforce by the looks of it. Uh, I'm going to have to make some tweaks and try and just get this finalised. And Lando yeah, Norris then seemingly fairly happy with the car as well. Let's just wait and see. Car feels pretty good. That's, as always, I know I always give him some stick about it, but that's pretty much all Lando Norris uh, will ever say about a car. We'll make some minor setup tweaks, see if we can just try and tune things a little bit more. And then I think it's time for qualifying. With FP3 all finished, it's time to move on to qualifying. For those teams who made the most of free practice, they'll be heading into qualifying full of confidence, knowing that they can carry today's momentum into the upcoming session. Does practice make perfect? Well, for one standout driver, it will make for pole. Here we go, folks. It's time to get started. Right, there we go then. Free practice done and dusted. Both of our cars are a little bit further down the order than I would like. It might be another weekend where Alpine, Alfa Tauri and Alfa Romeo have just got a bit more over us there. But Gasly, Bottas, Verstappen and Perez, all with grid penalties here. So it is going to make things quite interesting. Might be able to boost ourselves up the roster. But as always, we've got to make it through Q1 most importantly. Uh, whether we'll see ourselves out of Q2 is probably a different question. The most surprising thing, though, is the fact yeah. that, at least for Q1, we don't have any rain, nor is it likely to rain. So that's good. Hopefully we can just get through Q1 then without any major issues. And yeah, let's just hopefully fast forward through. And there we go, then. Official confirmation. No such issues in Q1 there. Lando Norris, Oscar Piastri both making it through in just the one run. It is our usual five out uh, in the end of the first session there, but Q3 is going to be a very, very different tale unless it starts to rain. Okay. Once again, though, it is meant to be another dry session, so I'm not going to complain too much about this. We'll send out both cars on a first run on the old set of tyres, and then we'll go for an aggressive lap at the end. Uh, if we can't make it through into Q3, I'm just going to try and save the tyres. 
has been a fairly tidy lap up to this point. I must admit, Suzuka does look stunning in the sunset here. But Lando Norris rounds through the final couple of corners. I think he's probably going to end up slotting in around the Bottas and Joe times, hopefully. Up over the line, and he will go, yeah. A couple of tenths behind Joe Guan Yu there. Lando Norris, slightly quicker and more comfortable with the car. will go P7 then. So that's a very, very impressive time by Lando. Charles Leclerc clearly struggling to get a good time on the board as well. But that being said, of course, we'll have a fresh set of tyres ready for the second run. Um, but I don't fancy Oscar's chances. Let's do this thing then. Lando Norris will ride on board as Verstappen. Apparently he's looped it round at turn 16. Now he seems to have been able to get going again. And I don't think he's going to be under too much pressure. Only a tent behind his teammate Sergio Perez then. But Lando Norris, we need to see him improve on this final run as he heads over the start finish line then down in towards turn one here suzuka of course such a roller coaster of a circuit we've got yellow flags out though in sector one don't say that's max verstappen again that's had issues in his red bull car no joe Guan, you stacked it and that might be qualifying done and dusted then at least for Oscar Piastri there. Where has Zhang Guan Yu gone round? It's the hairpin again. Has really caught out a lot of drivers this weekend. And Zhang Guan Yu might have taken himself out of qualifying as well then. Ready for the Japanese Grand Prix. And he's properly wedged it in the barrier there. But Zhang Guan Yu out then of qualifying. Will we see Lando Norris still able to improve despite that? Will we see Oscar Piastri still able to improve despite that then? How much will he lift off? Let's wait and see. Doesn't look like much, to be honest. That's probably quite a good sign then, as Lando Norris is able to improve uh, in Sector 1. What were the split times between them then? Uh, still going quicker slightly uh, than Oscar Piastri behind him there. Charles Leclerc improves up to P3, goes quicker uh, than, of course, double race winner. Now Lewis Hamilton comes into this one trying to get his third race victory in a row. George Russell down in sixth place there, but Ocon and Alonso stay in ninth and tenth. Valtteri Bottas able to improve up into 11th there, clear of Lando Norris as Kevin Magnussen can't improve. Zhou Guan Yu, Yuki Tsunoda will all be out then at the end of Q2 but will we see Oscar Piastri as he rides his way through the Casio Triangle then to finish off his lap? He needs a big, big chunk of time but he has found a lot in Sector 1 and Sector 2 up over the line. It's a 30.0 that's only good enough, I think, for P14 there. So that's a bit gutting for him. Lando Norris out of the final corner, up towards the line. It's a 29.8. He does improve, but not enough. And that is both cars out in Q2 for the Japanese Grand Prix. That one does hurt a little bit. Oh, well, there we go. Official confirmation at the end of qualifying two. Sergio Perez fastest there, clear of his teammate. But obviously, Gasly and Bottas with some grid penalties there does mean we've got a good chance to try and move forward come the Grand Prix. But we were expecting rain in qualifying. That didn't arrive. Could we somehow get some changeable conditions? Let's get into it. It's Japanese Grand Prix time. The grid is packed, so there's electricity in the air. But there's no surprises in that. It's race day. McLaren did well during qualifying. They maximized their potential and are in a good position for the race today. We saw a reasonable push from Mercedes in qualifying, and they'll have plenty of opportunities here to achieve a great result. And the race will be taking place under blue skies. That means the teams should be able to apply their strategies without any added complications. But now it's time for the team's cunning to emerge and for the driver's talent to shine. Let's see what's in store for us at the Japanese Grand Prix. Well, we hyped up all this potential rain for the weekend and none of it has appeared there come the end of the weekend. Max Verstappen is on pole there, able to get into the... Well, it's actually 28.9 is not that impressive. So whether we saw uh, the track get worse as we went through Q3, but... Oh, dearie me, look at that! It's meant to... So it's dry, it's going to rain, it's going to... Uh, rain less, rain even more, go dry, rain, rain even more, go dry, rain lots. How many stops is this Grand Prix going to be then? I mean, I guess it makes it simple that everyone's going to have to start uh, on the soft compound tyres there. But that is such a nightmare to try and work out uh, what is going on. Of course, luckily, because uh, that it's going to rain, we should be able to naturally save some fuel uh, throughout the Grand Prix as well. There, But Lando Norris starting P7, Oscar Piastri in P11. This is going to be a big step into the unknown. I've got no idea what is about to happen, but we'll just try and monitor things and make sure we're on the right tyres at the right time. It's sunny and bright as the drivers line up on the grid. And there is Lando Norris. With a top 10 position on the grid, 
this race could really go either way for them. And it's the other McLaren. They're in the back half of the pack, so they'll need to work hard if they want a podium finish. The teams are ready to go. Get ready. It's the Japanese Grand Prix. And it slides out, and away we go. Well, we could be in for an absolute barnstormer of a race here today, but Oscar Piastri then making moves as we head down in towards someone. Already at one place ahead of uh, Zhou Guan Yu there in towards the first corner. Lando Norris, though sadly losing a place, rather unsurprisingly, uh, to Max Verstappen off the start but I think we've just got to go aggressive early on there I don't know why Lando is so worried about that at the start of this race but I mean yeah it's meant to be absolutely tipping it down by lap 10 this afternoon so we'll wait and see as to what happens there as we can already see Max Verstappen still trying to make more progress there having a look up the inside of uh, Fernando Alonso and the Dutchman up another place on lap one Hamilton trying to get involved there with the Ferrari Charles Leclerc leads the way there with Hamilton going round the outside through the Digners on Carlos Sainz there that is an audacious move but he's pulled it off at the start of the Grand Prix there. So fantastic work done by Lewis Hamilton. Three wide towards the rear of the field there. As I can see Sergio Perez going side by side with both of the Williams cars. But yeah, Lando losing one. Uh, Oscar gaining one though at the start of this Grand Prix. I guess we've really just got to focus on what Alpine are doing this afternoon. As everyone is expecting the rain early on in this GP. Every single car on this grid has started on the soft compound tyres. Which we don't see all too often on F1 at 22 there but you can see uh, Lando under a little bit of pressure from Kevin Magnussen as we head down the back straight there so just going to try and use some overtake mode try and stretch our legs away from the Haas car there and maybe get a little bit closer uh, to Fernando Alonso down in towards the Casio Triangle as we round our way through to finish off this opening lap but who knows what's going to happen here at Suzuka today. We're going to have to really be on our toes throughout the entirety of the afternoon, but the last tricky conditions race I remember in this series was Austria. And, of course, that race did, went, went pretty well for us come the end of the afternoon. But, yeah, Lando Norris just pulling away slightly from Kevin Magnussen at the end of that one. We will try and just manage the battery early on here. It looks like it might just be one of those weekends where Alpine have got a little bit more than our car. It has happened on a few times this year, but, like I said, there's no point worrying early on things will definitely change around this GP today. Here we go, light rain on the radar apparently, so we have already on just lap three, gonna have to start worrying about this. You can already see as well, DRS has been enabled here at Suzuka, but it's still Leclerc, Hamilton, Sainz, Russell and Ocon still ahead of Max Verstappen there. The Dutchman cannot find a way around him, but this will be his first chance then with DRS there as we round our way through the final couple of corners. We're right on board with the Dutchman of course, he and Esteban Ocon have certainly had some beef in the past there. The Frenchman's going to try and go defensive. Had a fifth place finish in real life at Suzuka, did Esteban Ocon in 2022. But here goes Max Verstappen, then down around the outside, in towards the first corner there, and a pretty textbook move from the Red Bull driver. Of course, still got big, big championship implications at the moment. Carlos Sainz is still leading the way, but Hamilton with two wins in a row certainly wants to try and give himself an outside chance at this. Leclerc, of course, still wants in, and maybe Max Verstappen as well. Still fancies his chances to defend his crown. It's Kevin Magnussen, though, applying pressure to Lando Norris as we get to the end of lap five. And I think, oh no, I thought for a second there one of the Alpines uh, was into the pit lane, but that would have definitely been way too soon in this afternoon's race there. Kevin Magnussen goes round the outside of Lando, uh, back down towards someone. I do think that Haskar is looking very, very quick, as unfortunately it looks like Oscar Piastri has lost the place to Zhou Guan Yu as well down at turn one. So really, that's not quite what I had on the plan. I don't mind the Haas trying to drag us along, but I'm not convinced Zhou Guan Yu will be able to. And there we go. The rain is here in the Japanese Grand Prix. It's starting to fall already incredibly quickly, so it might be worth, I'd say, we box Oscar Piastri and then at the end of this lap, and it, I think it's going to be raining for everyone. I reckon we've got a box at the end of this one. We're going to have to pit both cars at the end of lap five here. It's incredibly early on for the Japanese Grand Prix, but if you've just got to be on the right tower at the right time and it might be uh, that we gain a lot of time by doing so there of course it only takes one mil of water uh, for the intermediates to be more effective than the dry compound tyres will we see any of the front runners though heading into the pit lane Charles Leclerc leading the way down in towards the final couple of corners if we see the Ferrari pit that's always a promising sign uh, for myself as well as Charles Leclerc just dancing his way around in that Ferrari no Leclerc stays out by Hamilton Sainz and Verstappen all into the pit lane there so interesting call 
everyone's not quite sure what to do just yet. Russell will opt to stay out as well as Esteban Ocon. But both our cars are going to have to dive into the pit lane. Then we're already up to 0.9 mil. So surely, surely we're going to be at the crossover point in the not too distant future. But that counter is now starting to go up incredibly slowly. It's all a little bit difficult to call early on as all those cars, like I'd panic them for a second because I saw a lot of people on the dries. Not a particularly brilliant stop there for Lando. Just got held up slightly. But there we go. It's over the one mil limit. So that is important for us there. As Hamilton somehow come out ahead of Latifi. And he's already a pit stop back uh, after five laps. Is just Latifi things, I suppose. But yeah, Lando comes back out and then loses a bit of time. Actually, a fair old chunk of time uh, to Kevin Magnussen up the road. And Oscar Piastri has lost the place to Bottas as well. But I think we've just got to settle in and see if we get to full wet conditions. And, of course, see... How much time we take out of those guys uh, that stayed out? And already see all of those cars that didn't pit really are struggling here. Hamilton, I think, is going to be comfortably up into the lead of the GP. As there goes Charles Leclerc. It's not actually going to be that simple. Charles Leclerc has hung on there at the front of the field. But Hamilton stays... No, Hamilton does go through. Lewis Hamilton back into the lead then of the Japanese Grand Prix. As where is Lando Norris going to be? You can see battling uh, with Zhou Guanyu and... Uh, sorry, Valtteri Bottas even and Kevin Magnussen back into Turn 1. So uh, so Norris is down to 10th then in this Grand Prix. Oscar down into 11th there behind Pierre Gasly. So we really did get caught out uh, in that safety... Uh, sorry, in that pit stop cycle, of course, because of all those other cars. But Fernando Alonso up into P4 then this afternoon. But still, we've just got to try and keep the car on the island. And again, that rain is still getting heavier and is meant to continue doing so. Oh, Oscar Piastri losing another place to Pierre Gasly. Suzuka really just doesn't... No way has he done that. Round the outside through 130R in the rain. Pierre Gasly is an absolute animal there. Of course, Honda's home Grand Prix are still powering that Alpha Tauri car. But what is that from Pierre? The absolute audacity. To do that to Oscar Piastri there. And I mean our team are gutted. But to be honest I've just got my hat off to him. Salute you sir. As Hamilton's still leading the way there. But Max Verstappen. Despite grid penalties. Is already back up into P2 then this afternoon. So he has certainly got the bit between his teeth. Top four in this Grand Prix. If I'm not mistaken. Are the top four in the championship. All the wrong way around. So that is quite a feat. Um, but Lando Norris here is just dropping back. Away from the two cars in front of him. Oscar Piastri as well. Losing some pace to Pierre. This is not looking good with Alpine 5th and 7th for us. We Lando Norris under increasing oh, pressure. Nicholas Asifi apparently is binning it by himself uh, at the rear of the field. But here goes Pierre Gasly in towards someone there. Somehow they go side by side through that corner. And well, Pierre Gasly's made another place up then in this GP. It seems like there is still a big battle going on at the front of the field. But yeah, I mean, look at that. There's still, still all... Just nose to tail at the front of the field, but we're just going backwards there. Sebastian Vettel, next car behind us. Surely we're not going to be slower than him. Oh, oh! Carlos Sainz has... He's been there again in another Grand Prix. How much does Carlos Sainz not want to win this World Championship then? I swear this is the third weekend in a row that the Spaniard has done something like that. And I, mean, yeah, I don't know how he's done that. Of course, retired from the real-life Japanese Grand Prix as well, but... How is Sainz managing this every single week and still leading the title? Right, well, now the team's suggesting that the circuit is almost dry again, but surely we're going to see a lot more rain coming in the not-too-distant future. Yeah, the rain is meant to go back up again, so I don't think it's going to be worth pitting uh, onto a set of dry compound tyres because we'll just be going straight back onto Inters again. Um, but, I mean, yeah, surely if it stays, you know, it hovers around this level, uh, then they're not even going to get much of an advantage if anyone did risk pitting. Talking of pitting, though, Sergio Perez, I think, has just had to make... No, he hasn't made a stop. He has just... He's gone off somewhere, and it never even told me. So now Lando Norris back up inside the top ten. Oh, no, Perez was always behind us, wasn't he? Uh, from the start of the Grand Prix. There, I'm just I'm just thinking about Carlos Sainz still a little bit further back. Perez has now moved past Sebastian Vettel. So it won't be long, then, I think, before we both get jumped by the Mexican as well. But I don't get why we're struggling so much against the cars in front of us. Perez has made the move then on Oscar Piastri. I mean, there's no real point fighting the Mexican, is there? We may as well try and use him uh, to get closer to those cars in front. Cheeky little send up the inside down at the hairpin. Sergio Perez probably not sensibly in the championship fight, but you know, still got to try and prove himself to Red Bull at the end of the day. But I'm guessing what we've done, of course, is accidentally take the setup too much towards the dry compound. Um, and, of course, we just haven't got enough aero. 
uh, simple as it just doesn't look like we've got enough straight lines. Uh, sorry, enough grip through the corners even to stay close to the AI. So I guess we kind of just got to grit our teeth, bear it, and get on with it at the moment. As Perez, I'm sure, uh, will probably make the move work on Lando back down in towards Tomon. And as soon as I look away, Oscar Piastri has looped it. And a bad day just gets even worse for us. Second weekend in a row, one of our cars has made a mistake Sounds as like a Perez spin. up the inside he'll go. Uh, and that's going to give Sykes an easy one as somehow someone's... Have they crashed into him? Yes, they have. Alex Albon, I think, has binned into uh, Oscar Piastri there as front wing has terminal damage and needs replacing. Luckily, I think we've got some of those as well. We've only got one left. I play a risky it game, apparently, uh, with the front wings. Um, but... We've got a penalty! Oscar Piastri has given a five second penalty for a collision there, so did he rejoin the circuit in front of Alban? That angle shows us nothing. Uh, still sat there, still sat there. Well, he didn't move! It was the fact Alban was side by side with Mick Schumacher in yellow flags, but apparently that's my fault. And, um, well, I mean, Oscar Piastri's afternoon, unless we get a safety car, is basically ruined already. And again, the track starting to dry up. But again, I don't think it's worth the risk of going back over onto a dry set of tyres. We've just not got anything this weekend. We're not even pulling away from Sebastian Vettel. In fact, the Germans actually taken a fraction of time at Orlando Norris over the last few laps. We're over one third distance, though. Oscar Piastri uh, is battling Lance Stroll. Has Stroll got damage as well, perhaps? Um, no, he's just really <laughs> slow, apparently. Like we'll sit right up then. At the front of the field, Max Verstappen has pulled away from Lewis Hamilton and, I mean, he just looks absolutely in control at the moment. The Dutchman went from well, mid-pack at the start of this Grand Prix. I think he started P8 uh, just behind Lando Norris to already leading by lap 20 and he's just romping away from Hamilton and Leclerc uh, that are still duking it out. Sykes is not making much progress either down in P16, but Lando Norris, 13 seconds back now, behind Pierre Gasly. What are we meant to do? And Oscar Piastri has spun again by the looks of it. How? How, Oscar? You've spent most of the weekend spinning. I literally said heading into practice I wanted to see more consistency from him. This is not what I had in mind. Lucky not to find a wall. But he is still going again, but practically now a lap down. Right, well, at half distance then in this Grand Prix, and again, we're getting to one of the driest points between now and the end of the GP. Are definitely going to need another set of the intermediates, though, uh, in not too long. So, Lando Norris, I mean, he hasn't even done half a Grand Prix yet on these tyres, so we need to try and get him at least to lap 30 to know we can go to the end. Do we risk it with Oscar Piastri? I mean, he's not really going to lose a lot, is he? We may as well risk it with Oscar Piastri and try and keep him out there. Stop Fernando Alonso, one of the first to uh, blink there as Latifi's binned it, apparently. Um, but Bottas now is ahead of Esteban Ocon in this Grand Prix. So that's quite a surprise. And to be honest, for us, quite a nice surprise, to be completely honest. Bottas has been a little bit away from things uh, in the last few Grand Prix. Just has not quite had the luck. Um, but, yeah, Bottas now running up in P5. It does not do us any favours in the championship, of course, drivers-wise, but does help us if it means Alpine score less. Lando Norris, though, heading down through the final chicane. I said he needed to get to about lap 30. He's just about done that and will be peeling into the pit lane then at the end of lap 31. Comes in just behind Esteban. Oh, Esteban Ocon just headed back out onto the circuit. So Alpine then might be struggling a little bit more. But not only have we not got pace around here... We also haven't really been able to hang on to the tyres any better than anyone else. So it really just has been a tough old afternoon for us. 20 laps to go. Oscar Piastri is still in between the Williams and probably not going any quicker than them. Um, but we should still be near the points with Lando. But I'm not holding my breath at the moment, to be honest. Is where is Zhou Guan Yu going to come out? Of course, was pretty close behind Lando before he pit. He's still going to be behind him, but not by much. Yellow flags out in sector one. Someone's binned it. Can't see anything on the mini map again. Just wait and see if we get confirmation. Uh, Yuki Sonoda, no. Home Grand Prix for Yuki. Has he binned it? Binned it? It looks like it's turn 11, which is definitely not sector one around here. And Yuki Sonoda, very, very lucky not to go into the back of Sebastian Vettel, but the second time this weekend. He's found that Armco barrier, and that does not do Yuki Tsunoda any favours. Does, however, give us back a place. There's still a lot of cars not opting to pit until very, very late on in this stint. So I don't quite know what the strategy plan is, but Lando, we're also not saving any fuel. We've just got nothing this weekend to show for it. Um, but yeah, it just is an absolute disaster. 
16 laps to go then. I'm really not sure what the AI's plan is at the moment. The likes of Perez, Verstappen and Leclerc are still out there. Hamilton's boxed again, which seems like the sensible choice, and is now gaining two seconds a lap. Why are they not pitting? They're going to have to, definitely, before the end. I mean, I'm looking at it. Could Gasly, you know, potentially fall back into our clutches? Carlos Sainz, Sebastian Vettel as well. Could we still potentially score points here just by the AI being really stupid? I'm not going to hold my breath, but you never know. Look at this. Through the final chicane, Lando Norris closing up on Sebastian Vettel there as Oscar Piastri, I think, has jumped Nicolas Latifi uh, finally. He really shouldn't be behind Latifi uh, with 15 laps to go of a Grand Prix ever, but Seb surely got nothing as we head back down in towards the first corner there. So Lando Norris got to try and find a way around him uh, sooner rather than later. But Sainz as well doing the same thing. Surely they're going to, if they keep doing this, they're just going to end up getting a puncture there. It looks like Verstappen has finally blinked in this Grand Prix. I think he's got a big enough advantage over Hamilton uh, that Lewis won't be able to get close to him come the end of the GP. But still seems very, very weird, the strategy that a lot of the AI are employing here. As Leclerc stayed out again, so clearly wants to lead some more laps. But yeah, I mean, Lando now is all over the back of Seb. 14 laps to go. Surely Seb's going to pit soon and we can try and move up. There we go. Sebastian Vettel's staying out there, but Carlos Sainz has pit again. Pierre Gasly's still running around, but he's a long, long way ahead of Lando Norris. I think we've just got to push to the flag uh, and see who does what, because this race honestly is making no sense whatsoever. Sadly for us, 12 laps to go. Gasly, oh, Yuki, don't say you've span again. What's Yuki Sonoda done late on in the afternoon? Cassio Triangle, has he done an Oscar Piastri? Yes, he has, and his home Grand Prix has turned into a nightmare, and he's almost taken out one of the Red Bulls as well. Uh, not the day for Yuki Sonoda, but Lando Norris, sadly, doesn't look like he's even going to get back into the points. Having to save fuel late on in the day, he's, under, no, he's not under much pressure from uh, Zhou Guanyu there, but I think Oscar Piastri is probably going to be the one to watch when it comes to tyre wear. He's going to be very, very tight towards the line, but I think, to be honest, we've just got to get both cars home. Max Verstappen then starting the final lap here from Suzuka as Oscar Piastri's tyres are basically absolutely destroyed, but yeah, the Dutchman, I mean, what can we say, is absolutely dominated in this afternoon's proceedings as we've got... Oh, no! Lando Norris just lost the place to Zhou Guanyu. Can I try and go on the overtake mode? Out of the final corner and get back past the Alfa Romeo. I've got no ERS on him. Don't think he's going to be able to do anything. Back down towards Tel Mon. But Max Verstappen, he's still got slim but real possible championship uh, hopes still come the end of this first season of the F1 manager McLaren career. But of course, we absolutely dominated with Ferrari last season. But Sykes with another disastrous weekend. I don't know still whether he'll lose the lead of the Drivers' Championship. I can't quite remember what the gap was between him and Charles Leclerc, but Hamilton, with another P2, is definitely closing down big points against all of them at the moment there. Of course, Max Verstappen will finally return to the top step of the podium, but poor old Lando Norris. It's just been an awful weekend for both of our cars there. Uh, looking at it, Alpine are going to walk away with uh, 14 points as well, so they are certainly going to close us back down in the Constructors' Championship, and that little buffer uh, that we're building up still certainly very, very important, but is getting a lot, lot smaller there as Carlos Sainz trying to close in on Mick Schumacher. But Max Verstappen down in towards the Casio Triangle for the final time this afternoon. He started down the order, but honestly, it never looks in doubt. The Dutchman has been in the league of his own this weekend. Max Verstappen will come through to win the Japanese Grand Prix here. Lewis Hamilton looks set to come through in P2 ahead of Charles Leclerc there. So three of the championship hopefuls will still make up the podium. George Russell in fourth. A very, very quiet weekend by him. Bottas hats off to him again. Another best of the rest result there. Able to beat out both of the Alpines. So Alfa Romeo again take more points out of us as well. Lando Norris out of the final corner. P12 for him is an absolute disaster. And Oscar Piastri, I think he's going to come through for P17. So yeah, really... Really not the weekend to remember for us. And that's good enough work from Lando Norris this weekend. McLaren showed some good stuff here today, but they'll be building on that now to try and improve their results next time. There's no rest for F1 team. Let's hope their hard work to get them closer to exceeding expectations in the next race. And after this result, the team is fourth in the constructor standings. Coming up next, we'll be crossing the pond all the way to Texas for the twists and turns of the United States Grand Prix.
well. And there we are then, the end of the Japanese Grand Prix. Max Verstappen keeps his championship hopes alive there with a dominant race victory. Hamilton P2 ahead of Charles Leclerc there. George Russell in P4. And Bottas went from 16th to 5th there. I didn't even notice that from the Alfa Romeo, but absolutely rapid this weekend. Alonso uh, beat Tank Perez, who started from the rear of the field there, but he did actually get the jump on Ocon uh, on that final lap, so that certainly does us a bit of a favour there. Kevin Magnussen, more points for Haas ahead of Pierre Gasly there. And Joe Guanyu beats out Lando Norris down five places for him. Carlos sunk another weekend with no points scored there, and Oscar Piastri down in P17. But that means championship-wise, look at that at the front of the field. Three points now. Between Sykes and Leclerc, 13 points cover our top three in the championship standings there. There's still over 100 points available, though, between now and the end of the year. But I think sensibly, yeah, Perez and Hamilton, unless they get a miracle, are pretty much out of this. George Russell definitely is out of this and has been for quite a while, uh, to be honest there. He's much, much closer to Bottas than he is the cars in front of him. Alonso will get the jump on Pierre Gasly there. Norris and Oscar Piastri, though, will still hang on. I don't think sensibly uh, we're going to lose the places to Esteban Ocon. But I really want a good, strong final four races of the year to get a bit closer to Fernando and Pierre there. Constructors-wise, though, uh, the gap has come back down to Alpine, like I said, but still 12 points over them at the moment, so the gap has been halved as we leave Suzuka there. Alfa Romeo, uh, still another 11 points behind them, so it's it's certainly not down and out for us at the moment. We have got a good fighting chance, but thank you all so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed, please do make sure you leave a like, get yourself subscribed as well, and we will return very, very soon when F1 manager heads to Kota. That last year was a crazy race. You guys do not want to miss it. None of these videos would be possible without the help of our channel members. So a massive thank you to all of the names you see on your screens currently for helping support the channel. You can join them by clicking the join button down below. And yeah, thank you once again to everyone that continues all the insane support on my work.